This is the Deadpool review. Uh, before we go to the movie, we're going to dinner, and sorry about the sun. Hey, look, you can see my face now. Yeah, so doing it right, going to dinner first. And now we go into the movie. Couple of things. One, I've already spoiled it for myself. I've read all kinds of reviews and things, and uh, people I know have seen it, so I know the twists and the turns. So we'll see if it still holds up, even though I'm not going to be surprised. And uh, I feel like versus last Deadpool and actually last movie review, uh, we've gotten, I've gotten a little bit more knowledgeable in the technical side of things, so I'm going to be watching it with a little bit more of a technical eye this time too. So we'll talk about that when we get to the actual review here in just a second. First impressions immediately out of the theater. It was really good, uh, but I feel like everybody's already made that comment, so that's nothing new. We're gonna get into all of the critiques and the breakdowns and stuff as soon as I throw it to future me, who is more prepared than I am right now, fresh out of the theater. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. <sighs> so now we're going to do the review for Deadpool. I'm outside with the dogs, and... I gotta go clean up some dog poop real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. So, first things first, if you are looking for a see it or don't see it, then the easy answer is, by all means, go see this movie. It's worth the cost of admission. It uh, pays a lot more tribute or homage or however you want to say that to the source material than pretty much any superhero movie out there it's well put together nothing I can say about this movie is going to deter the uh, from the fact that uh, you should see it it's good even I, I dare say even kids even though this is a rated R movie and I understand the desire to keep your kids innocence or whatever. I don't think this is the movie that's going to harm them in any way. This is this movie's a lot of fun. It's oop, it's ultra violent. I don't want to uh, dismiss from that, but and we are outside, so there's going to be noises. I just wanted to do something a little different for this review because it's a different kind of movie. Um, but yeah, it is ultra violent. So if you do have an issue with your kids seeing blood, then you know that is one thing. But as a society, we have more issue with with boobs than we do blood, for whatever reason. And there's really no nudity. There's there is no nudity in this movie. It's all language and blood. So those are the things that you're walking into this movie. If you are okay with your children seeing this, seeing those two things, then then take them because this actually is something that they'll probably enjoy too. As weird as that is, there's a lot weird about this movie. Uh, we're not, I do have it, but we're not gonna go over the synopsis. I uh, just have this for point, uh, kind of direction. Uh, this will be a short review because it's a little more glowing than most of the reviews. I will see uh, Solo this weekend, probably twice, because I've seen Deadpool two or three times at this, uh, three times at this point, so. I will see Solo twice before we talk about it. I feel like there's going to be a little bit more to talk about with Solo. Um, but uh, let's get into the technical side of Deadpool. Uh, technically speaking, there is nothing... There's nothing fantastic about this movie. There's nothing that... Uh, well, we talk... Uh, when we talk tech technical with video, we talk about having a conversation with the... 
uh, camera and how uh, certain directors and certain movies do that very subtly. The, the fact that Deadpool breaks the fourth wall kind of defeats the purpose of doing that with subtlety. So it doesn't really happen with subtlety. There's no interesting camera moves. There's no interesting uh, uh, sh cutaway shots. When two characters are having a dialogue, it's really traditional in the style. Uh, you're gonna be seeing over one, sh one character's shoulder and watch the other speak or vice versa when you're in a conversation. Again, nothing, nothing stupendous. There was nothing that really stuck out. This isn't a David Fincher movie. Uh, God, imagine that, a David Fincher superhero movie? How epic would that be? Uh, so technically speaking, not really anything to write home about. Really, if you're going into this movie looking for any sort of technical uh, wow factor, you are going to be, the one thing you're going to see is the CGI. And that's gonna be the thing that you're gonna go, wow. Um, but even that falls a little short. Once, once we get later, oh, and by the way, before we start getting too deep into actual movie plot details and things, uh, spoiler alert, because we're going to talk about all of the elements. So if you haven't seen it yet, you got your go ahead at the beginning of the, of the video, go see the movie. But uh, back to the CGI, the, there is a fight scene between, oh my god, the juggernauts in this movie. Oh, we're going to get to that in a second. But there's a fight scene in this movie between Juggernaut and Colossus. Both characters are completely CG, and it looks like a video game. I feel like, again, we had a lower budget. It's not as low as the first Deadpool movie, but it's still pretty low. Um, we had a low budget. So that shows when you have a character that is completely CG. And in this movie, we have two characters that are completely CG. And they fight, which is, is so... Like, it's better. Like, I, I, I fully believe that the CG is better in this uh, Deadpool than in the first Deadpool. Because it's the only real comparison you can make. Uh, considering the budgets are similar and considering, you know, you have a similar team. It's not the exact same team. We got a different writer director, but still. Um, so yeah, there's, that was a, that took me out of it for a second when we had the, the video game fight. Uh, the, the fact that Colossus still is always in his metal form kind of drives me crazy. I feel like in the second movie, they wouldn't rely solely... Yes, I understand he's a large character and we need him to be that uh, visually, but we don't need him to be that all the time. We could have uh, found... The, we could have... Even the voice actor, I feel like, potentially could have been Colossus, uh, the it, regular skin Colossus, not metal skin Colossus, because uh, it's been done that metal skin Colossus grows into that size, that giant uh, beast of a man, whereas uh, regular skin Colossus is regular guy size. Yeah, he's a little big. He's he's a kind of a big Russian dude, but nothing that we couldn't have cast. Uh, so I feel like that was a little distracting. It made sense in the first movie because we didn't see him a lot. And mostly, uh, there are down times where he could have been regular skin in the first movie as well, but budgeting and things like that, he wasn't on screen a whole lot, so it's passable. He has a little bit more screen time this time, and in regular situations, and I feel like it could have made our climax at the end a little more dramatic if we see Colossus transform into Colossus uh, going into the battle with Juggernaut, rather than he's just always big metal dude. Uh, that, I, I feel like, was a little bit of a disservice to the movie. Uh, but again, technically speaking, it looks great. Juggernaut, when he's the only CG character on screen, looks fantastic. The, this is the best non-animated version of the Juggernaut. So what that means, he's the, one of two, he is the best of. Which isn't really saying much because the first live-action Juggernaut we got was horrible. <laughs> was absolutely atrocious. Was 
not a representation of that character in many, many ways. Um, so the bar was set pretty low, and <laughs> this this raised the bar up to where it should be because the Colossus is is a character that has a little bit more depth than I feel like a lot of people give him credit for because he's Charles Xavier's stepbrother, uh, or half-brother rather, because he has these ties to the X-Men so that this, the CG while good is still not great is still not, and I'm not convinced that those people are actually there um so, I mean, you can kind of take with that what you will. So that's that's the technical bits. Uh, now, as far as plot goes and as far as action in the movie, there's a lot of really awesome stuff that happens in this movie. We get, uh, we get an introduction to a kind of version of the X-Force. Uh, and, and so all of the people who are, who are, well, I wonder what they're going to do for the X-Force movie now, because they killed them all. Spoiler alert, they're all dead, except for Zazzy Beats and Deadpool and, uh, what was the, the regular dudes? And I can't remember. The regular guy. I don't remember his name. Um, those three are still alive. So Shatterstar and, uh, Zeitgeist and, and we should have saw this coming because they gave us Zeitgeist. In the X-Force comics, in the very first X-Force comic, Zeitgeist dies. <laughs> uh, he's introduced, and then he dies like five pages later. So that should have been a clue as to what was going to happen. So this is, again, this is an homage to the actual first e issue of X-Force in that way. Um, also, uh, one thing that I thought was a credit to this movie was that they never... They never called the Juggernaut a mutant, but this brings up another qualm that I have with this movie. <clears throat> so, Juggernaut is not a mutant. That is one of the reasons why the Juggernaut in X3, the last stand or whatever, that is, that is one of the main reasons why that version of the Juggernaut is so horrible, is because they, they give him a mutant ability, um, and he's not a mutant. The Juggernaut, for anyone who does not know who watches this channel, the Juggernaut gets his powers through a mystical statue. A mystical statue, he's not that big. A mystical statue makes him that big, makes him unstoppable. He is the unstoppable Juggernaut. Uh, in the X3 movie, his mutant ability is that once he creates momentum, he cannot be stopped. And that just isn't true. His... The only way to stop the Juggernaut is to stop him psychically, which is why he wears the helmet he wears, because that is designed to keep any uh, psychic mutants out of his head, specifically his half-brother, Charles Xavier. Uh, so when they made that reference in, towards the end, once they got off of the bus, or off of, yeah, off of the transport, and uh, he and the kid are walking up to the school, and, and the kid says, so your brother's always trying to get in your head, and... That was because his brother is Charles Xavier. Speaking of Charles Xavier, the little throwaway bit that they have uh, towards the beginning of the movie where they have all of the X-Men in a room and Deadpool's bemoaning the fact that he never gets anyone else's help besides Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and then they turn around and they close the door. Uh, that was filmed on the set of Dark Phoenix. So that's really awesome. I, I really have low expectations for Dark Phoenix, but... That's one cool little tie-in so that we know they are a connected universe. It's just... And th that's also correcting an issue with the first movie. Because in the first movie, uh, Colossus is trying to get Deadpool to join the X-Men. That doesn't happen in the books. In the books, Deadpool really wants to join the X-Men, but they want nothing to do with him. Uh, they, they, do, they go on missions and they do things together, but the X-Men do not want to make Deadpool a part of the X-Men team. Uh, to very varying uh, comedic lengths, Deadpool go, tries to prove himself, and it's, it's a running gag. Um, but in the first movie, that was flipped, and they wanted him, and we just talked about that. So, in this movie, they fixed that. Colossus 
gets over the fact that you can be an X-Men, you can be an X-Men. Colossus said, no, you can't be an X-Men. And then Deadpool kind of wants to be, I mean, he kind of sort of is half-assed an X-Men for 10 seconds in the movie uh, anyway, but then because of that, Colossus says, no, you're not an X-Men. And then we get a little bit of Deadpool wanting to be on the team and actually claiming to be on the team, which happens a lot in the books. So again, we get more homage. Uh, there was, oh, and, and watching this movie, if you watch Cinema Sins at all, you can, you can hear every sin that they're going to ding this movie with because <laughs> I, I honestly feel like some of the, someone on the writing staff, uh, put a lot of elements in this movie, or, 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 or contributed to a lot of elements in this movie because it was going to, because it was going to get ripped apart by, by YouTube channels and websites and things like CinemaSins. Uh, voiceovers, we have the killing of the girlfriend as motivation, we have so many things that they're going to get dinged for. You can hear the episode playing while you're watching the movie. It's, it's great. Um, uh, so by and large, this movie is very good. Uh, out of a 10 rating, I still need to work on the rating system for these uh, reviews, but out of a 10 rating, I would say you're looking at probably like an 8.5, maybe a 9, where the first movie was about a 7.5 to an 8. Uh, so thereabouts, it's, 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 it, it's just for reference, uh, a 10 would be, would probably be The Dark Knight. Um, even the Dark Knight, there's flaws and there's things that you can pick apart about. So a dark, the Dark Knight would be about a nine and a half, where Deadpool two would probably be uh, about a half a point to a point below that. So that kind of gives you your metric. Uh, definitely check out this movie; it is worth your time. Thank you guys very much for watching this review. Let me know if you agree with me. If you disagree with me, we can have that conversation down below in the comments. Uh, it, if you want to see other reviews, then you should be seeing a button on your screen right about here. Uh, or anything else on the channel. Again, there's a button on your screen. And before we log off or whatever, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. And we just reviewed Deadpool.